teaching undergraduate research methods using action learning sets. This is Thomas Lancaster from Birmingham City University speaking as part of the Higher Education Academy Innovation in the Assessment of Social Science Research Methods. My interest in research methods doesn't actually stem from a social sciences background but from computing because that's my academic discipline and so my viewpoint will hopefully provide a contrast to some of the more social science views but I feel a lot of the things that I do with my students are equally applicable to the social sciences. Generally research methods in computing are useful to students because they can feed into the other modules they study and they can help with finding jobs at the end of it but they're not the be-all and end-all and we tend to cover a lot of general core skills ranging from writing, referencing, finding information, using literature, uh, even the ways of analyzing data, particularly the math side, which feeds in a lot to the sciencey subjects. And importantly, many students use research methods in their final year project, which is what other disciplines might call a dissertation. For instance, they may use literature to decide what kind of software system to develop, or they may use some form of survey or user analysis to evaluate the quality of their final product. My background in all of this is a senior lecturer in computing at Birmingham City University where I've worked for around 10 years and I also lead our biggest course which is BSc Computer Science. Most importantly I teach the module professional practice 2 which is the second year module including employability skills and setting up the final year project. I coordinated the final year undergraduate project for many years and I'm interested in various research areas around education including social media which feeds a lot into my modules and teaching but people watching this may know me for my work in areas of plagiarism and contract cheating where students pay to have work completed for them and I feel that feeds a lot into the whole ethical area of research methods and professional practice. So what do I include then in the module professional practice too? It's a year two module and I'm going to take the 2012 to 13 academic year as an example. It's taken on computer science and business information technology. So not every computing degree offered at Birmingham City University, but two of the biggest ones. There are around 120 students in 2012 to 13. That included direct entry students mainly from China, which creates its own kind of problem with delivering the module. It's a 15 credit module, so worth one eighth of the year and it's taught over 20 weeks so slightly less than one full academic year because our 15 credit modules stop before the end so students can concentrate on larger 30 credit modules that includes one non-teaching week the delivery of the module groups of 20s two hours a week no separate lecture for me 2012 to 13 was the first year I didn't teach all the groups myself and so that created its own challenges by having other staff involved with delivery but luckily the materials have been refined over a number of years the only thing I couldn't add was my own examples we got in staff with plenty of experience in both employability and research the two main areas on the module and we make a lot of use within those sessions with short presentations but in particular activities and in particular things to do between the sessions using our Moodle virtual learning environment Two main sections on the module, the employability and placement skills for about the first eight weeks and then the research methods for the rest. This particularly design to help students with their final year project also to let people know about the master's course and to think about what they might be doing in the future. We don't pay a lot of attention to theory so although it may be mentioned slightly that saved much more for master's level and we focus on practical application. We get students to do research studies within the class and to try things out to put information into spreadsheets they've collected and see what it does. And this is roughly the content broken up over the 11 weeks. So we start off by looking at literature which is new to many students thinking about using other people's opinions of value that can add to their work and then we look at how to write that in academic form which although it's covered in the first year along with referencing people struggle with we look at finding the best quality information online which is supported by staff from the library the main research methods and then we focus more on questionnaires in detail because those are used a lot and of course many students think I've done questionnaires before but there are a lot of issues with piloting questionnaires, validity of questionnaires and one of my areas which I think is so important now collecting information electronically and how that can be used. Ethics is important both for the students own use and professional body accreditation. 
one very specific case study example on user testing how do you get students to find out what people like and dislike about systems in a formal scientific manner analyzing and presenting information which also uses some of the academic writing skills and then working on designing an academic poster which is presented at a poster fair and then we have no assessment in the final week we look forward to the final year project which is so important and all these set of course skills support the students both on this module and elsewhere on their course the assessment is based around two parts for the research methods part in the module there's a literature review I always add the word critical to that because it encourages students to think in a slightly different way because literature is new to them individual piece of work check for plagiarism where students use five to ten pieces of literature to, to construct an argument and to contrast and we look at giving students a choice of topics where there's literature available where they can come up with their own sub niche within that area but which will interest them so they tend to be based around technology and whatever's going on in the world and which is accessible literature which is so important for students no complicated maths which will throw them but then the part which I'm more interested in for the purpose of this presentation the research investigation which is done in an action learning set and this is an alternative take in research methods in particular these action learning sets are used throughout this section of the module but they involve students answering a research question and there's a lot of data collection and evaluation communication and presentation we do something a lot of students don't like when we form these action learning sets and that's to draw them completely at random we put all the student ID cards in a box draw them out into threes to fives ideally fours but it depends on the numbers in the class and then the students are able to work throughout their labs and seminars for the rest of the module and also using the Moodle discussion area on practice tasks and assess tasks actually learning sets have got a lot of advantages not least because they're not the same thing as a group and it's about students working together to solve a common task and if students have a bad experience of group work despite the fact this will be used in the real world and in industry it's important to them the research investigation is assessed in four parts they don't all carry marks the first thing students have got to do is to come up with an appropriate research question now not every action learning set manages to come up with something which I consider appropriate in which case I will assign one for them I can come up with a largely never-ending supply of suitable up-to-date questions which will interest them and may even provide information of value at the end of it they have two checkpoints in class which are very lightly assessed the purpose of these is just to show they've done something they have to show how they've designed their research what they plan to do to answer their question and they have to show their evidence that they've done this research for themselves I think if somebody's doing something like a survey we would expect to see copies of the data if it's been done physically copies of the forms have done electronically copies of logs and then the important bit and which most people say is the best bit of the module is we use a session completely to have a post affair where students display, talk about and assess their projects. The rule we have for research questions which works well in computing is have to focus on an area appropriate to the course, which tends to be computing and technology, but we also allow business and business information technology students, and we also allow education because the students will be interested in this because they're on an educational course in the first place. There's a rule that there must be scope for all the members of the action learning set to do something. So we expect to see one research task per member of the action learning set, or more importantly, per active member, because sometimes a student will disappear midway through and it should be possible for the rest of the action learning set to continue without that. That doesn't mean that the students only work on their own task, because we'd ex expect them to help out the other members, but they should take control of one task. So a task might be a survey, a task might be a set of interviews a task might be a literature review, a task might be a piece of action research and we have had cases where people do the same type of research method but do a different task for instance there may be a survey aimed at lecturers and another survey aimed at students, they're two separate tasks they've got to be sensible, students can't just do a survey because I think that seems easy and that's why we look at the research design and we insist on approving that before students can continue so here are four questions we used in 2012 to 2013 we asked about the use of LinkedIn very important for students for employability that feeds into the rest of the module uh, a student focused question they come up with about music downloads which again interests them and relevant technology one of the 
best pieces of work in here is about programming languages and the popularity of them. Uh, you notice the constraint there in since 2005 to make that an acceptable question. And then the question about violence in video games, which raises all kinds of ethical issues to go alongside that. And hopefully you can see ways in which these can grab students as well as providing useful information when the research is done well. When the students have collected their data and analysed it, they put together a poster and I've heard this phrase highlight the module quite often in module reviews. We say an A1 size poster and we're strict for that, although sometimes people don't know what A1 is. Five minutes of presentation, which again we time quite strictly. We may go up to five minutes and 30 seconds, but that's it. It's stopped at that point, plus time for questions, which some students can use strategically. It's reviewed by tutors. We always have two people reviewing that, but most importantly, all the other action learning sets in the room are reviewing it as well. And the tutors and action learning sets use the same criteria. And we split it evenly, marks from the other students and marks from the tutors. There's a little bit of a paper process at that point to put the marks together. We do say that we reserve the right to weight the marks for consistency across the different seminars. And that occurs when the very unusual time when everyone decides we'll just give everyone else full marks, which generally disadvantages them. And we do try and explain the reasons why, but occasionally you get students who want to do that. And you end up with these kind of posters. I'll just give you an idea of what they look like. They're not two particularly great ones. They're just the ones that happen to be on the photo that I took at the time. But a fairly standard academic presentation there. Uh, again, providing something useful students can put in their portfolio afterwards. Does this system work? Well, I feel it does because I've been using this assignment now across several varieties of professional practice and project preparation type modules for around eight years. Uh, we get some excellent work. We do get work which is of a publishable standard, particularly in the educational field, where we go to something like Higher Education Academy Conference and it's not something we've pursued greatly within the module in the past, but now we're moving much more towards a students as partners focus within higher education. I do feel that there are areas out there which I want to re-explore with the students in the future. The posters get used in displays. We put them out at open days because they're very visual. They draw people in. They're generally accessible based on the types of questions about real world computing, which is what interests prospective students. And we use them in teaching. We show them to students about what they can be doing and to give them ideas for inspiration. We don't allow students to do the same question that previous action learning set has done. Uh, we do occasionally get issues with people working in action learning sets when they start talking about group work and someone else not paying or not pulling their weight. But we do cater for that in the marking scheme. At the poster fair, we collect information on what everyone's done and ask them to rate anyone who's not pulled their weight and we can use that there. And I certainly feel that there are a lot of advantages from this style of teaching for CVs and future employability. What does this work within the social sciences? This is an area where you have to think about your own individual discipline and feel how you could take this approach. I'm happy to support you with what I've done to show you things in more detail, to provide longer presentations because this is quite time constrained based on the overall way this project is working. But yeah, I feel it could work. It may be where research is more important. It becomes more of a first year way of working, the second year way of working. These actually learning sets can be useful for students to make new contacts when they're starting at university. I'm very keen to hear the results of applying this. And if you do have success or you do want to try it and just get me involved, then please get in contact. My contact details are my website thomaslancaster.co.uk and my email address thomas.lancaster.bcu.ac.uk If you want to review this in more detail the slides are up at slideshare.net forward slash Thomas Lancaster and the video at youtube.com forward slash Dr. Thomas Lancaster. Feel free to leave comments on the video or to get directly in contact. Thanks for watching what I do within computing discipline, working with action learning sets to produce research posters to engage students and to present research methods in a practical way which is applicable for my discipline. I look forward to hearing how this works in the social sciences. Thanks for watching.